Good morning, everyone. I am sharing my morning coffee with you. I hope you're doing well. Um, I wanted to come in here today to talk about a phenomenon that I see both in individuals and in couples that are working on their relationship, that already have a fair amount of work under their belt and an awareness of what issues they're facing. They might already be you know, far along on their journey. Uh, but I've been talking to some people recently, at least two individuals in relationships that are struggling in the last week who have felt like they've been working on it for a while and they just are not making any headway. They're trying to communicate about the issues. They're focusing on how they're going to communicate. They're focusing on being able to articulate the problems in the relationship to their partner. Um, they've read some books. They've listened to some podcasts. And in spite of that, effort to problem solve with their partner, it's make, like talking about it makes it worse. They find that every time they broach a topic, it just, it goes south. Um, the other thing that comes up around that is if you're afraid that it's not going to work, if it doesn't go well, then you end up walking on eggshells um, and sort of vacillating between not bringing things up at all and kind of just stuffing your feelings or confronting something head on because you reach boiling point and then you end up in a conflict and end up feeling even more frustrated and more misunderstood um, or more disconnected than you did beforehand. This is super common. It's a massive barrier in relationship transformation, and it really has its root in something deeper than what it appears um, on the surface. And I think a lot of people don't recognize it as the threat that it really is to true and relationship, true and lasting relationship change. Um, and this is what I call a problem-focused mindset. Now, what do I mean when I talk about a problem-focused mindset? Because obviously, if you're having struggles in your relationship, you have to be able to shine the light on the problems. You have to be able to know what they are. Um, but the tendency is to want to focus on these struggles, to focus on the problems, go deep into the problems as a way of resolving them. Uh, but the issue is, is that most people to turn around their relationship, they're trying to turn around their relationship uh, by discussing their problems so much, going so deep into like the nuances of the problem, all the different manifestations of this problem, um, all of the different various ways that this problem impacts them, all the possible origins, the symptoms, going into the analysis as a way of fixing the problem. And it really is a part of this diagnostic mentality that we all have that is really useful in some ways, but I think the tendency is to go, is to stay there for too long looking at the symptoms, identifying and talking about the problem, you end up staying in it, right? You try to stay in it in order to take it apart and then fix it. But here's the thing is if you're in a relationship that's in crisis and you're focusing on problem solving first, that's not what's going to work. It's counterintuitive, but the truth is, is that you're, if you go right to problem solving and you end up staying in that realm of the problem, if you're in crisis, um, it's actually just going to make things worse. People want to rush in and they want to communicate about the problem and they're focusing on the wrong things. They're focusing on how do I communicate about this problem? How can I um, fix this problem? Uh, but then what we focus on expands. And so you end up just staying in the world and the mentality and the experience of the problem which is not what is going to help you actually build something new. It's like fighting an existing narrative in order to change a narrative as opposed to stepping aside, creating a new narrative and then inviting your partner into that. So how you might tell that you're in this mindset, if you um, are wondering and if this resonates with you, maybe you've had the experience where you're working so hard to transform the relationship but every time you try to bring something up to your partner, you're working on your communication, you're thinking about how you're going to say things, but it actually, it doesn't work. And then you question yourself, like, I said it the right way. Why did that not go well um, in terms of my partner's response to me? Or why did I not walk away feeling like this problem is now fixed? So in spite of trying hard and working hard, you end up in more disconnection, right? And then this creates hopelessness and essentially reinforces the negative interpretive framework that you're in. And once you're operating from this frame of mind, you're far more likely to notice every single thing or even more like how much your partner is disappointing you 
you notice even that much more how things aren't how you want them to be. And every single thing that you see is through those lenses, right? Um, and that might be happening with your partner as well. You might be unconsciously giving them ammo to like reinforce their negative frame of you. And, you know, that just perpetuates this horrible cycle. Then you commit even more to wanting to solve the problem because you want to eradicate the experience that you're having in the moment. You just want that to end. And even though it's not working, you keep doing it because you fear that if you don't, that the relationship will fail and that's not what you want. The stakes are high, right? And you fear that if you move away from the problem, if you let go of the problems a little bit, then you're, what you're ending up doing is just sweeping your problems under the rug. You're going to end up just staying stuck in an unhappy place, just avoiding what's really going on. And that's the biggest fear that keeps people stuck in the problem-focused mindset. Um, people really are afraid that they're going to just be resigned to nothing changing. And like the only way I can stay in this relationship is just to be unhappy and just accept that things are unacceptable. And then that leads to this false dichotomy. And I, I was there. I know what this feels like. There's this false dichotomy that you're either in the thick of the problems trying to fix it and solve it, right, tackling it head on, or you're just doing nothing and you're stuck and you're unhappy, right? But from this false dichotomy, you end up actually missing out on really beautiful opportunities to connect, organic opportunities to connect in ways that you might not see because you're just not even open to that possibility, right? There's moments that could be really good. There's moments where there could be a lighthearted connection, but that doesn't happen. And you could actually use that to build the foundation of a better relationship or to create that deeper emotional connection that helps you problem solve later. But you miss it, you filter it out unconsciously um, without even realizing it. It's just not even on your radar because you feel like you gotta solve the problem first and then you can enjoy the relationship. Once you know everything is going to be okay, then you can be open to these spontaneous moments of love and connection. But the hard truth is that most couples actually continue going down this downward spiral of staying in the problem, even while they're trying to turn it around. So even the couples that are getting professional help, they're focusing on most of the time on the problem and they end up staying there. So, and how this shows up is that you might be really making some positive changes, but your partner doesn't see it, right? They're still looking at things through the lenses of the past, and that, feel, that puts you in a state of despair to feel like, gosh, I'm working so hard, I'm making all these changes, and they don't even see it. So that's an example of a problem-focused mentality. If they don't feel like the problem is completely resolved, then they're not even able to see what's in front of them, which is the fact that you're making these positive changes. Or on the flip side, it might be you who's having a hard time letting go of resentment or letting go of the past because you haven't had that solid, we fixed it experience that you're looking for. That knowledge that now it is solved, like this finite concrete thing that you can just wrap up and it's over now. But really what works, what I have found in my experience and what the research shows is that you do you do better in the beginning of your relationship journey you do better if you're in crisis if you focus less on the problems like literally move your attention away from the problems and start working smarter not harder it's just going to use about the same amount of energy or maybe even less but it's way more effective you're shifting paradigms so what works is to consciously start focusing on the positive and building concrete references to build a new narrative to support the vision of where you want to go <clears throat> as opposed to you know noticing where you still are or where you've been so that's the solution the solution is to shift your focus onto the positive now that just sounds so like oversimplified right and it sounds really cliche so i want to explain a little bit more about what this actually looks like the solution is to start noticing, consciously bringing your awareness to and creating the positive moments in the relationship and expanding on these. Now, this is different for every relationship, right? Um, what's positive in your relationship might be not the same thing as what's positive in my relationship. So you really have to think, what is positive? What does my spouse think is positive? What do I think is positive in the relationship? Start consciously noticing those and then creating those if they haven't if you haven't, haven't had them and they're just not happening at all what's it going to take to create those so that you can actually start to focus your attention on those 
the thing you have to remember is that where you focus your attention is what expands. You literally grow the thing that you spend your mental time thinking about. So you want to commit to spending most of your time, like 90, 95% of your energy should be spent thinking about how you can proactively create something different than what you fear, how you can cr proactively create something different than what you're experiencing right now, or that, or the thing that you're the most distressed about. So this is a shift in thinking, obviously, and it's not as easy as just thinking positive. It's not that simple because what's real is real. You might have some negative emotions. You might have some deep-seated resentment that lives in your body. And it's very difficult to just, you know, forget about that. Um, and I'm not saying to repress any emotions or feelings that actually live in your body. That's, and that's the subject of a, of a different um, talk. And I will talk about that in another time. But you don't want to ignore that. You, you can, though, notice it and then shift your attention off of it. And this can be done with practice and changing, and it's really in the context of other personal development, like changing your limiting beliefs at the subconscious level, um, deep boundary work, and self-empowerment. So it's in the context of some deeper work that this becomes possible, not only possible, but easy and a part of your daily practice. So if you're struggling right now and you're having that experience of feeling like, oh, I just can't make any headway trying to solve this, try to shift your thinking and remember that the first thing you should be doing is committing to expanding the positive in your relationship. And if you have literally nothing to focus on that's positive that you can expand on with your attention, then just create it. Think about how you can create that. Just try it. Um, because this is, this is a phenomenon that's true in all of life, but even more importantly in relationships. The reason why this focus on the positive is so important is because we know that successful couples do better when they have a certain ratio of positive interactions to negative interactions. And this was discovered in Gottman's research. If you're not familiar, Dr. John Gottman um, did longitudinal studies and found that successful, happily married couples that went the distance, not just they went the distance unhappily, but they went the distance happily and they were fulfilled. They had at least a ratio of five to one positive to negative interactions as defined by them. Um, so they actually died <laughs> happily married, not having solved all of the problems in their relationship. They might have had the same exact unsolved problems that they had at the beginning of their relationship, but that's not what took them out. So we know that the problems uh, focused approach, which is really what most of the couples approaches out there are focusing on, do not yield good outcomes for couples. So if you can keep this in mind, that is going to be key and it's going to be life changing for you. So please, I urge you to take on this shift in mindset. Think about this today. What can I, what can I do to focus on the positive and expand that? Um, and just try to let go of the problems just a little while. If you need to table them because you're afraid you're going to forget something important, that's a really great insight that you can leverage later on for your belief change work or for your boundaries or for the requests you're going to make. Capture it in your journal. Capture it and set it aside you know, three to 5% should be focused on that problem and the rest of your energy should be focused on expanding the positive. So that's it, I feel like I've made my point now. Um, if you have any questions or if you feel like you want support around this, you can book a free call to talk to me or one of my fantastic coaches. I'm gonna put a link below this video where you can sign up, it's a free session. And on this call, we can just kind of help you create a plan on how to do that within your unique circumstances and your unique dynamics. Um, and other than that, if you have any questions or comments, or if you want to engage a dialogue in a dialogue with me about this topic, please um, comment below in the comments fields. And I do like to read those comments and I will respond um, to those comments. So I look forward to hearing from you. I hope that this was a little bit of inspiration that you needed to hear this morning. Have a wonderful day and until next time.